lights background. Hey guys. Hi. How's it going? Good. I missed your faces. I missed your face. Hey. <laughs> I, I missed y'all too. My microphone's being weird. What it's are you fl- being weird about, dude? It's it's turning or it's not tight enough. Ooh. Ooh. Why is it so loose? You know, that's a good sound. You messing with your mic? Mm. Sorry. I'm really sorry for all that. sorry, I know. Well, I'm really enjoying it. that. How did your mic get that way? I don't know. I haven't used it. So last time I used it was with y'all. Okay, hopefully it won't flip out again. You think that the uh, the cleaning ladies that came what? in twisted your mics? How do y'all mics? do your mics? What's your what's your thing? So y'all like hold it like way up here, don't you? Like, I don't Tim, hold my you got mic. yours. You got yours up high. Yeah, I don't know what I do. Well, the key is you don't want the mic to cover your face because we're doing video. Okay, I just kind of like just kind of always angle yeah. it up towards your mouth. Mm-hmm. A little bit, a little bit lower. Mm-hmm. There. Okay. Now talk. Yep. So does that? Does that? I mean, because some people have it up high, some people have it down low. I just didn't know if there was like a proper way. No, to do there is it. no proper way. The only proper way yeah. is don't cover your face. Yeah. Unless you're <laughs> unless you're just doing like radio or yeah, podcast so without. Don't want to cover this beautiful face of mine. Hey, you like my shirt? Mm. Oh, is that from your your friend? Oh, well, yeah, I don't know. It's that dark cycle, people. Right. Yeah. They're not friends. They're not friends. <laughs> They're competition. Don't promote Kinda. them. What did you even yeah. say their name Shoot. for? I didn't say their name. Did I say their name? No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. Yeah, Nobody you did. knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. It's called knows. dark Nobody cycle. Knows. Nobody knows. Mm. Josh. Josh, Josh, Josh. Wait, so Tim, are you in a new, a new play? I am. Are you? Are you? Is it Beauty and the Beast? And you're Cogsworth. I am Cogsworth. That's right, Tim. Can you in mic up new. a little bit? Get that turn your game up. Yeah, that, I, that, I am Cogsworth. That makes me very happy. That, that makes me very happy. It's gonna be good. Can you hear so, me well, better? Yeah, cause yeah, that's good. It. It's gonna be good. Uh, yeah, I have to take on the ooh, that kind of guy. I'm sure oh, you already have. No. Wait, oh, yes. Can you run some right lines now. with us? Um, I'd have to go get my script. I, a lot of it's just me going, uh, I'm in charge here. <laughs> and then not being in charge. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So is Cogsworth, is he French? No, I'd say he's more British. Yeah, more more okay. of a British gentleman. He's, a, he's more of a, yeah, British. Are you, you going oh. to do, are you gonna have to do that? Uh, yes. I'm you working on my uh, British. Oh man, Josh, he is Tim is an I'm actor. Sure yes, he's got I know. to do that. Come I'm, I'm sure he's really, and you're good at it too. Uh, I, you I know, would have a hard time keeping. Well, I don't know. A I lot mean, of I had a script. Fun because I'm with that uh, Lumiere t- dude, and he's like always, you know, how's bothering he? me. How's he? Oh, how's yeah, the he's... actor for that? Yeah, they're both great. They have two Lumieres. Um, is there supposed to be two? Well, one no, sings, but. They they have like backup kind of backup plans just in case they don't do that for me but uh, I, my availability was really good so hey, so you're Josh. gonna have to sing in a British accent no well I do have a song and I will take on certain characteristics of it yes I, I go when I'm human again only human again when the world once more starts making sense I'll unwind for a change. And then Lumiere goes, really, that would be strange. Can I help it if I'm tense? In a shack by the sea, I'll sit back sipping tea. Let my early retirement commence. Far from fools made of wax, I'll get down to brass tacks and relax. When I'm human again. That'll be awesome. Okay. I'm sold. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. That's what so that, would, that would be. That would be very, very hard for Lumiere because he has to. He has to sing in a French accent, right? Yeah. Is he like? Has he well, done that before, or is this like brand well, new to him? No, these guys that uh, they picked are um, both killing it in that sense of the word. I when I auditioned, they had me read as Lumiere real quick, and I was like halfway French, half Hispanic. <laughs> I don't know what I was. 
But, I, you know, it's kind of hard to keep. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, friends. My <laughs> accent's <laughs> always turned into Russian at some point. Yeah. <laughs> every it's, time. It's hard. Yeah. Uh, especially that one, you have to keep your. <laughs> you've got terrible. to keep uh, your, your, the way you do it. And then I mean, I go uh, Hispanic. I start to sound like uh, Adam Sandler. <laughs> hey, so speaking of that, real quick about accents and stuff, I don't know why. I don't know why I do this, but I noticed that I did this the other day. So my son's girlfriend is half Swedish, half American. Her father is full Swede. Her mother is American. So her grandparents on her father's side came into town for their graduation. Her and my son just graduated from high school. So they come in and we have them over for dinner. I was like, oh my gosh, it'd be lovely to have these people over and meet them and just kind of talk to them about their culture. Mm -hmm. So they come in and they have such strong Swedish accents, which is actually a very nice, pleasant accent to listen to. So they have these great accents. And then every once in a while, because the grandparents didn't speak, they spoke English, but it wasn't really fluid. So they'd kind of go into their Swedish dialect here and there. And then when they would kind of look at me and ask me something, I would go, see, sí, see, sí. Spanish. <laughs> I would go immediately to Spanish. Like, I do, like, <laughs> but I do yeah. it. It doesn't matter who, what nationality it is. I think that like I'm somehow being, I don't know, international yeah. by saying any word sí. in Spanish. Yeah. Where for those of you who don't know, Todd and I work together at a shop and we work with Hispanic ladies. And so it's just kind of automatic for us. Right. Yeah. See. Si. Yeah. Si. I mean, just see. Si. See. Si. Yeah. See. Si. Wow. Uh-huh. And, and, and fortunately, I don't think they picked up on it. Like, why do you, why are you saying Spanish? <laughs> they're just being nice. They, to you. Yeah, they were just being nice. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so I just thought that was funny when we talk about accents, how I just immediately go to that every time. What's uh, yes in Swedish? In Swedish? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But one of my most favorite movies is The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Both. Both the, the old school series and then the new one that David Fincher did. The first one that David Fincher did. And mm-hmm. I just love, I love that accent. I love that. I don't know. It's just such a, such a cool accent. So I, like, I love that movie. Primarily because of the accent. I mean, it's a good storyline, too. Yeah. yeah. It's been a while since I've seen that. I'd like to go back to it. Revenge. Need to do that. But that, dude, that scene, though, it, in both films, but that scene where um, she gets basically raped, uh, dude, that's, that's so hard to watch, man. Like, I find myself now because I love the movie so much. I find myself now, like when I put it on, I'll 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 skip through that scene, just because it's like uh, I like the movie, but I mean the scene's good for what it mm-hmm. is, um, but it's tough to watch. Well, that's an interesting debate too. Um, it it arose during Game of Thrones when there was a rape scene between a brother and sister, Cersei and um, the guy's name. Anyway, nerd. But anyway. But it was a big, it was a big deal, and it came out, and it, it's a big debate started where it's like, should we be showing rape scenes in movies? Like, are we getting too trying to be too realistic that it's are are we kind of doing a disservice? Sure, I mean, I can understand the argument there. Um, can you leave some of it to up to imagination? <laughs> Absolutely, you can. Um, but in some of these cases, like when you have a director like David Fincher, who loves to portray this dark, seedy type of life, but really make you feel it. I mean, even with color tone, really make you feel it. Um, like he had a conversation with Rooney Mara, who plays the uh, girl with the dragon tattoo, that plays, uh, I can't remember her name in the in the movie. But, um, but anyways, he had a conversation with her prior to her even getting the role. He said, this will change your life. People will look at you differently, and this is going to be a tough scene to play. And um, she was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. But I love how he, like, I mean, numerous times, from my understanding, he would go up to her and say, I don't know if this is right for you. You know, because he had her in um, uh, the Facebook story. What was that called? Um, Social Network. Social Network. He had her in there as a small part as um, Eisenberg's wife. That's right. Or a girlfriend, I'm sorry. At the very beginning. So he was familiar with her, but didn't really know her too, too well. So when he was casting for this, 
she really wanted the role. And he was just like, ah, I don't think you do. I don't think you understand what this is. And then when you watch it, you go, oh, whoa, whoa. But back to what you were saying, I think if you want to understand maybe what women go through in, in that particular situation, that puts you in that situation. I mean, other than going through it, obviously it's got to be totally different, but it puts you pretty darn close to what that must have felt like from emotion to fear to pain, uh, physical pain. Man, it was – so I, I don't know. I would lean towards – I think it should. I think there's opportunities where it can be suggestive, but I think uh, in situations like this, I think showing it, it man, it just makes you feel the character, and that's the point of acting, right? You know, clearly, you know, in the film, you know, I don't think there's intercourse. <laughs> actually, I, I don't, I don't know for certain, but I would assume that there's not. Um, so there's some level of safety there in it, but man, intense. So I would say I would. Although I skipped through that part now, when I initially watched it, it it put me in that moment with her and possibly with other victims that would be in a situation like that. So I don't know. I, I think that's kind of what film is for. Uh, that's why I enjoy film, to be a, to feel that character. I guess the danger would be if you were a rapist and you watched the scene, you'd probably go, man, I'm, I'm going to go rape a woman now. Or feel well, like oh, I mean I think I, that that brings me back to when I used to rape women, you know. Yeah, right. Uh, uh, who knows? Well, no, because if you think about that, like think way no, before I mean, film, I mean, way before film. I mean, even when you could say the the depiction in in literature of of rape, like yeah. people raped. I mean, people raped before it's a, it was a thing. It's just what it's what people Humans did. Dirtbags. It's what they do. Other. Yeah, I mean, just awful, um, awful people that do cer certain things like that and. Um, I don't think film, I mean, I think film can inspire. I think literature can inspire. I think, I think the act of anything can inspire. You have a friend who goes around and you're like, Oh man, he seems like a really cool guy. Oh, he's a rapist. Maybe I want to be a rapist too. Mm, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's built into certain people that yeah, really definitely. have no morals or, or, um, compassion or empathy yep. built in. I think they lack it. Um, so, so when they <laughs> do that to the... somebody, they There's found no a lot um, of sociopaths out oh there. Oh my the, god, there are a lot the of la them, dude. the lack of empathy. But if you the... think about it, I mean, with eight billion people on this planet, I would say mostly we're good. Mostly, we're good people, you know. Um, but there are there are a good amount that are pretty awful. I watch a lot of murder, crime, true crime things, and it's amazing how they're not telling the same stories. <laughs> <laughs> they're all new stories, man. It's just like. Holy oh. shit, yeah. So if you pay attention to that and you go, man, yeah, this world is dark, this world is evil, but you can't do that. I mean, that's it's truly a small portion in comparison to the rest of us that are out there. Yeah. Yeah, side note. Um, yeah, what was your side note? <laughs> that was it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was had, a side note. <laughs> I had Josh, a, uh, you, did you bring ice cream for the whole class or no? Because I tell you what, I'm really enjoying you chewing in that microphone. I'm glad we got that all set up for you. So you could chew mm, right in it. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cook, you know, in hot fudge, concrete mixer from Culver's. <laughs> mm. Can't go wrong, man. Can't go wrong with some ice cream. I love just straight up vanilla, dude. Mm. I just, dude. Oh. I just like came a home. bowl of hot fudge. I bet you do. Uh, oh, my man, son came a peanut home. Peanut Buster Parfait from Dairy Queen. And brought mm. uh, Briar's uh, soft and creamy vanilla. Dude, fire. So good. So Favorite good. ice cream, you two? I think so, man. I mean, it's it's pretty awesome. Just vanilla? Yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of times I'll get There's stuff so much stuff in it, but I ain't up picking around just eating the vanilla. I'm cookie dough. Well, because that stuff gets old after. Well, like, if you get a little tub, a little quart of cookie dough or Reese's Pieces or whatever, like, after so much, it's like, ah, I just want ice cream. I don't want all these... Oh my gosh! I get the little tubs of cookie dough, the edible cookie dough now. Not that like normal cookie dough would chase me away. I eat that too, <laughs> but they actually have edible cookie dough in the freezer. Hmm. Um, remember the old saying that it would give you worms. You don't remember no. that? 
I mean, my mommy said, my mom would no. always say that, like when I would go to like get the bowl and eat the cookie dish. Don't she probably do that. just didn't want you eating it. That's exactly what I think yeah, it was. I'm so sorry. You're gonna wow. get worms. No, my I mom can't never wait told to get to heaven and have a conversation with her about that. Remember the whole cookie dough thing? That's all I want to talk to your mom. That's about all I want to talk to you. And about. it's egg, right? That's is it's the it's raw the egg. egg. Yeah, I think it's the raw egg, not yeah. cooked. I think that's the whole thing. And, and maybe there's some truth to it. Like salmonella. 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 So today. I wanted to chat with you guys about something. Mm. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about near-death experiences. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Timmy has been telling us about this video of a guy saying something, and he sent it to me finally. And I watched it. And it's basically about it's called like it's basically about the reincarnation trap, right? Because I saw I, after you sent that to me, I went on a little rabbit trail, mm-hmm. like looking at other videos. Mm-hmm. There's a lot. There's a lot, man. And so this is kind of, other than you telling me this, and I'm always diving into a lot of this weird stuff too, I never actually heard of this, like the reincarnation trap. It's kind of a new theory to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think kind of to you too, Tim, right? Like yeah, other than I was seeing like, it. what? Yeah, no like way. this is kind of, and so That's when weird... I started finding other things about it, I was like, wait a minute, this is a thing? Like this isn't just some random guy saying it? Well, but it's almost, cre- the, the thing that makes it kind of creepy in my opinion is that it's, a thing, and it's coming from like a, apparently coming up uh, from high up in the food chain, like people who the would elite. know, right? Yeah, people who would know. Uh, yeah. There have been whistleblowers and stuff about it uh, that, like, you know, worked in the government and worked in right. high up in the in CIA and FBI, and they're like, "Yeah, no, this exists." And you're so like, what? what? Right. So when you hear it and you hear it explained. <clears throat> doesn't seem any far-fetched than any other belief like it doesn't seem like oh there's no way right if you believe in anything anything outside of the normal this does not seem far-fetched like i heard this and went okay that's a viable theory very odd so i I got a clip of it and i want to see if this is going to play for us Um, yeah Uh, by the way the other thing you can look up uh, is that we're a prison planet, which is interesting. To so that's part of this. To souls, to people who are still souls. I've heard that. And, and so multi dimensional beings, we are a prison planet. Yeah. So let's play this, and then I do want to dive into all of that because this kind of spawns prison. off onto some other things. Yeah, it's creepy. Yeah, it's, it's a very beautiful creepy. prison. It's a great prison. We yeah. have a beautiful prison. The problem is it's. Flawed. It's gnashing and of weeping and gnashing of teeth as well. You know, it's war and heart heartbreak. So Earth and, is hell. Yeah. Well, yes, I have heard. dude, that's what they're in saying. A, in an it's, essence, yeah, like that. Yeah. The there heard. was another Although, video. There was another video that I watched, and that's basically what it is. So let's get into this. Let's watch this video. So it kind of gives all of us an understanding, and, and all of you out there who haven't heard this theory, an understanding of what this is, and then we'll kind of dive into it and just pick it apart because there is a theory there that that this is actual hell. This is what they mean by hell, Earth. So let's give this thing a play. I'm not a New Ageist. Some of the stuff from the New Ages actually I'm quite good about and I think makes sense, but a lot of it isn't. And uh, when you die, i.e. your physical body ceases to exist, your soul doesn't go back to source. It wants to, gets caught in that grid. It is struck with a huge amount of electromagnetic energy, which makes you forget. And then your soul, for want of a better word, I use the word soul, is put back into another body. And only sometimes when the process fails do you have what we call memories of past lives. Time and time and time again, souls are recycled on this planet. That's why that guy there stands there with the sword, because that's their domain. You're not getting out. That's a prison. This is a prison planet, and that's what's going on. And that's why on the Black Ops badge, it's exactly the same. It has a grid around it. Uh, it's my, my contention that humanity has been on this planet a very long time, but at some point the DNA was completely tampered with uh, to dumb you all down, uh, to reduce your DNA strands down to two, to take away your ability to be telepathic so that you can't challenge the prison guards. Uh, if I was a being that could, I use the word feed, uh, if I could feed on energy, how wonderful to have billions of billions of people all 
being angry, having sex, enjoying football, and producing all that energy that I can then identify, hook onto, and survival. I don't want you all going. If you go back to source, you'll think, I'm not going back to that place. That's a horrible place. It's a horrible. Who would want to be here? So what we'll do is we'll put this energetic grid around the earth. Any soul that comes out, we'll see. Let's go to Hollywood now. Look for the white light. Oh, I had a near-death experience, and I saw the white light at the end of the corridor. Don't do it. That is the trap. Walk away from the white light. That is what you've been indoctrinated with. The white light is the trap. You go to the white light, you are zapped, your memory is partially removed, not always fully, but partially removed, and you return to another body. And, ooh, you've forgotten nearly everything, unless you're lucky enough to have a past life memory. What can you do about it? Um, you have to evolve spiritually. You have to not accept the people who run the world as it stands, because they know the truth, and they're doing very nicely on it. I don't know how long it will take, but it's an injustice on humanity. Um, and really and truly, knowledge is power. And I think that you have just got to evolve to a point where you just say no. There it is. There uh, it is. There's another one I, I, I could probably find, too. The guy says you, um, he says, no, you know, people go to the source and um but they never turn around to see the universe and then you know he's that's where he says like uh we're you know in, in his opinion we're multi-dimensional beings you turn around and you could look at the universe instead and say i wish to go home and you'll be you know swift, swiftly brought to that dimension from which you came i guess which I, you know uh, I, yeah it's that's all this is all crazy to me I don't know what to think of it, but I do think it's an interesting theory that's um, coming up more and more, and it has a lot to do with the argument of near-death experiences too, which, you know. So, yeah. yeah, I so, mean, who are who are these swordsmen? Who are these prison well, guards? Well, he was saying, I think he was talking about black op badges and you know different uh, um, degrees of military and um, industrial complexes and stuff. So like, humans. For, like non-spiritual well, humans are the ones yes, who yes are holding no. us. Yes and no. So I watched another video about this too, where they talked about it. And apparently this all comes from a book written by some lady. And I can't recall what it is, but I'm sure if you guys Google it, you'll be able to find it. Um, I think that's where this, this theory originated from. So oh. apparently this goes deeper into like spirit and how also the talk of like aliens are actually interdimensional beings um, that are actually spiritual type beings as well. So with that being yeah. said, they're the ones who who continuously cycle our souls back down to Earth so they can keep us here and then feed off the energy to I guess I don't know. This is this is kind of a um, almost Scientology sounding thing. Um, well, I mean, but that's the thing is it's not any crazier than you know. Um, all the other stories that we see in the Bible. Like, it, it, it's crazy, and it's hard to fathom, but so is a lot of the other stuff, right? Like, who was it? it was it, um, oh, who was it? Was it Inky? Who am I thinking of that went up in the uh, spaceship from the mountaintop? <sighs> well, uh, Moses would have. But it was, it, was, it was before Moses. Kind of. Well, yeah, I mean, it was, but it was... Um, Oh, uh, like an Egyptian guy? No. It Enoch? Was Enoch, thank you. Yeah, Enoch. So Enoch, right? So Enoch goes up the top of this mountain and basically goes and travels all throughout space and then is, you know, taken mm -hmm. up into the heavens, basically. Like, that's a crazy story. Yeah, it's uh, uh, Enoch is an interesting tale. In the Bible, it says that he was so loved by God, he never dies. Like, he just... Yeah, it was taken. He just and ascends, and he doesn't die. He just leaves. Yeah, um, like Elijah. Yeah, like like an Elijah or a, uh, I believe Elisha too, right? And they're both. Well, I guess they both did, didn't they? A few of them. Yeah, there's a few of them where they're just whisked away. They never die. It's like wow, that'd be that'd be crazy. Um, but we know that the the we know the Bible was written um, in a story format. 
Like you don't take it literally. Well, I I think that's that's the question, right? Like, I mean, it's literature, it's history, but it's also literature. But it's just all all the Bible is is it's it's verbal stories passed down thousands and thousands around of years, a campfire, around a campfire for that, a long time. That at some point mm-hmm. somebody said, "Write that down." Moses wrote oh. the first five. books. It still survives to today. Like we're not talking about one person wrote this stuff down. We talk about thousands well, of people wrote this stuff down. Here's the thing we have to think about too when we think about the the uh, judo Christian Bible is that we a lot of it too has been borrowed from Sumerian text, right? So that predates Moses. That predates all that all that other stuff. So when you look at the flood story that's in Sumerian text. It doesn't mention Moses. It's a totally different character. Um, there's, there's birth to a, a, a virgin giving birth to a child it has nothing yeah. to do with Jesus. So th- there's a bunch of these stories that are in there. I mean, they have the 12 uh, apostles, right. Are basically in the Sumerian text as well. Totally different. People. Yeah. I've, I've heard this. Right. This so there's, a, this has been brought up a few times. I think Bill Maher's favorite thing is, uh, uh, you know, on HBO, he always brings this up from time to time. Right, right. So uh, I know he did in his movie Religiosity or, or something like that, where they really kind of go in and say, "Look, what you know? How can you say this is all just Jesus when it's been said before right. or documented before by another a- ancient culture?" It's like, wow, that's weird. I didn't even know that was a thing until I saw that movie, and I was like, "That that is pretty weird." I you mean, know, it's definitely but. it's definitely weird. So when you think about that. You go, okay, well, how old are these actual stories? And I'm a firm believer in, and I do like anybody else and everything else, I could be entirely wrong. Yeah, I, it's just fun. We're just it's just fun. About. But I'm a firm believer in that humans have existed for, um, I mean, I, I, who knows? Who knows how many years, right? We want to say that the the new homo sapiens, such as us, have been around for a couple hundred thousand years. Um, but were we around before then? Did we have great civilizations before then? Do, does a catastrophic event happen and wipe us out except for a few? And then we bounce back. Do we destroy ourselves? And then we bounce back. I mean, think about it. If we had a huge nuclear fallout right now and it hit every nation, there'd be survivors because we'd go underground. But then at some point we would fall out. Well, right, but at some point, exactly. Good, at good some show. point, we'd come up, and things would start to deteriorate. Right? Like I wouldn't know how to build a, uh, a computer or anything like that. So I'd be telling stories about computers. I'd be telling stories about videos. <laughs> I'd be telling stories about how humans used to fly, and everybody, all the kids would sit around like, "Listen to old man Todd talk about yeah. the flying machines again," right? Yep. And, It'd be fascinating to them. I'd and then like they that. would tell those stories and they would tell those stories and they would morph and they would change and they would get a little, little more bizarre. And then at some point when we kind of discovered maybe a new form of writing or putting this information down, somebody would write it down. And then a couple hundred uh, years from then, somebody would read it and go, what the hell is this? This is fascinating. This is godlike things. Yeah. There's a, there's a movie I, I want to say with, um, Christian Bale and he and his dad. Oh no, it's Christian Bale and, and um, uh, all right, all right, all right. Matthew McConaughey. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe he's in it. Reign of Fire. Have you heard about it? Yeah, it's like a, a medieval it's a, right? a dragon. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah. there it's a it's a modern day story of what would happen if we found a dragon or a den of dragons, and it, they all escape and just ruin London and take over the world again. And what's funny about that, or why I'm even bringing it up, is that um, there's a scene where I think it's uh, Matthew McConaughey's character and Christian Bale, they're recapping uh, what they could remember of Star Wars to the kids, right? And so, you know, but they take credit for the story, of course, like they wrote it. Right. It was really just them telling a tale to uh, the kids in the bunker, you know, about the dark, the, the dark side. And, you know, the, the Darth Vader was his, this father of the, <laughs> yeah, you know. and think about that. Like 
that you go back to what Josh was saying at the beginning here, where it's like all narrative, right? It's all story. And yeah, what did people go? Wow, that that probably really happened. And what people, you know, pass along as truth and pass along as uh, more than just narrative, you know, when it really was just a story potentially, right? Oh, yeah. Well, then you but, think of, um, you think on top of that too, Tim. Like the 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 hope that that would give people, right? Is like life is very hard now and all this kind of stuff. The mm -hmm. hope that you would give them one day, it'll be a lot better. Mm -hmm. If you follow these rules that I have laid out for you, it's going to get better. You know, we got to stop. Well, and I don't, I don't necessarily think. I, I think the confusion with that, real quick, people often say that. Oh well, if you follow the rules, you get to heaven. That kind of thing. Sure. No, it's not a heaven but, thing. It's not a heaven oh, thing. It's just a better, better life thing, right? Like if, if. But I mean, think about that I, time. I, I, that time you're going to be fighting over food and resources and all that kind of stuff. And then there's going to be this theory that comes around going, well, back in the day, we used to all get along for the most part. We used to work right. together for the most part. Right. right, right. So that's what yeah. I mean. Is like it, it'll get better if you follow these rules. Right, be kind right, to each other. Right, because we knew these rules. We knew these rules back then. I get you. Right, yeah. right. So these rules, uh, I think they're not new, man. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the uh, the um, Sumerian text is just a copy of something even before that. Right, like they found something when they were digging, and they were like, "Oh man, these are actually." Look at these stories. Well, I mean, isn't the Sumerian this? If you read true Sumerian text. Are at least, uh, as far as I'm concerned, what uh, the History Channel and Ancient Alien shows try to do, they recap them, the Sumerian text as best they can. And it's actually quite different than uh, any of that. I think uh, it's a bunch of beings that brought us here to mine gold, right? Right, yeah. And mass produced us because they were sick of mining the gold. And that's Zachary so they, Stitchin's kind of take on it there. Initially, when he sure transcribed it, but if he's somewhat right, right, that and there really was not just one atom, but multiple atom, atomas and that, evas, and that, all that. That was man and woman, is what it meant. And, yeah, and uh, yeah, man and woman, and that um, we were really just a big slave race. Don't you think that uh, the beings that are there? guiding us would also have told us the, the laws of us being nice to each other kind of thing so that they could keep or maintain order. Well, so they probably maintain, and, they and probably creating. maintain order out of fear and dominance. I mean, you know, if, if, if any of this holds any weight in truth, I mean, these were giant beings. The Anunnaki sure. were like these, what, 12 to 15 foot beings. I mean, that were just huge that would hold a lion and be like the size of a kitty cat. Right. Right. You know, so I think yeah. we were just like, oh, yeah, okay. I yep. like that you said kitty cat. A too. kitty cat. Well, you, when you say kitty cat, it makes it seem even smaller. A little kitty cat. Right. It's a little baby kitty cat. Yeah. Uh, apparently, uh, Indians used to talk of men who could grab a buffalo. Grab a buffalo by his Well, that's, uh, yeah, the hand. giants of um, of uh, North America. Uh, what, New, New, um, New Mexico. And yeah. The what Grand do they call Canyon them? They called stuff. them something. The red-headed giants. They were redheads. Yeah, they had red hair yeah. and gray skin. We've talked about that. Mm-hmm. There was a, a previous episode. There was supposedly a story that happened in Afghanistan, and there's artistic drawings mm -hmm. of a firefight between one of these red-headed viking -y looking guys with six fingers and six toes up in the mountains of Afghanistan. And it took a, a bunch of our, uh, um, you know, special forces out, it even took them yeah. out with all their weaponry. And it was like hard to fight. And finally they kill him and they put him on a, a pallet, this huge thing. And that, so there's a few artist renderings of, uh, uh, because they didn't, nobody would have been allowed to take a photo for sure. You would have been immediately mm -hmm. thrown in some sort of imprisonment. But there were or, some, know, there were a few soldiers that actually came out and said that they were witnesses. They, and they, they would like, yeah, like comparing their feet with their, just their boot and stuff mm -hmm. and going, wow, this is crazy. I mean, think about this. Like, here's a great, here's a great example. If you think about, um, like I, I'm, I'm five, four, so small stature. But, you know, a little stocky, but still small stature. So you take 5'4", put me next to like a Shaquille O'Neal, right? Yeah. This dude's almost eight foot, if I'm correct, right? Shaquille O'Neal. Right. He's big. So 
Everything is heavy, bigger. His arms are four times the size of mine. His neck, like everything is bigger. Now multiply that to 15 feet high. Yeah. Right? Like in comparison, these guys are huge. Like my waist. Apparently they also ate us too. Like they were real, yeah, they weren't afraid so to just be like, oh, I'm going to eat that thing. I'm Crazy. Hungry. So let's get back to the reincarnation trap. Yeah. Um, what do you think about that, Josh? About what the guy said? Well, I mean, the reincarnation trap. So let me kind of... I'm not familiar with the reincarnation trap. So that's what the guy was just talking about. So let me kind of break it down for you uh, and for our listeners as well. So reincarnation trap is saying that when we die, we've been lied to that when they say go to the light, because we've always been told that when you go to the light, you will pass over into heaven. And that's that's where the true... Goal is to be into heaven, right? That that is actually a lie saying that when we go up, when our souls rise from earth, we get trapped in this grid, this matrix of a sort that's surrounding the earth, and that we're met there by an entity that takes the form of multiple uh, and things. And says he's the source. He well, says it he's could the say source. it's a source. It could say it's Jesus. It could say it's your dad. It could say whoever right. it wants. <laughs> and the goal is to convince you to, to go through the light, you to, go to entice light. you to go through the light. So what the light actually is, is immediate reincarnation. That immediately your soul is sent back down to earth and reincarnated. And the idea is to trap souls on earth so that they can keep powering these other dimensions, these other beings, whatever it is. Um, kind of like um, uh, the movie um, The Eternals. Uh, yeah, yeah. They had the great, yeah. you know, they were, you know, we were just pawns. We were, you know, uh, these the great Eternals beings. isn't isn't the Earth basically a giant egg, if you will, hatching and a, hatching yeah. another Ti- Eternal Tiam- Tiamai, they're, they're, Tiamati or whatever. Yeah, his yeah they're wanting to make it into like an egg or like a factory. Well, of... well it's got a being in the center of yeah, it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and I think in the Ti- end we don't know like what the true goal is for them entrapping the souls. Um. But that's kind of the idea. That's what it is. So the so the the um, the reincarnation trap is is just that that you. So where where does this come from? Like, what's the root? Why did this become? A, why did this become a a, a well, thought? A couple of things um, now, that I'm aware book. of. There was a book that a lady wrote saying <laughs> these things, and that kind of what Tim was saying earlier too. That that um there the, the Elites on planet Earth that are still human, like the elites, like to say the the Rothschilds and all these other people, the kings and the queens, the kings and the, the queens and the Rothschilds and all the elites the on Earth, the- that they are fully aware of this, that this is just what it is, you know. Because even if you think of like the Rothschilds and kings and all that stuff, that they were these these were humans put in place to rule while the other beings were away. Right to do their bidding, so they basically so, said, "Hey, you guys throughout- can all manage Earth, control Earth, reap the rewards and benefits from it." But our true goal is this. Uh, and I want to say something about that um, real quick because supposedly the um, elite, some of which are, to quote Princess Diana, or you can see quotes where she's talking to old friends and uh, and they're like, "What's wrong?" and you know, she basically just says in code, these people are not human, like talking and referring to some of her family members in the, in the, uh, you know, like, like the Royal family members, like straight up basically. And then, then you get into like reptilian stuff, maybe the Anunnaki and reptile stuff has a certain, uh, truth to it as well. They're disguising themselves. They were the original gold miners, and we've become the gold miners. And those mm-hmm. lizardy type creatures have become the ones that, yeah, are uh, are actually the ones in charge and dealing with us and kind of protecting us, or not protecting us, but making it so that yeah, we're we're in our place and keep and it in the bloodline. Do. You know, and that's yeah, that's yeah, one of yeah. the things too. Because think about this: like, why do we have <clears throat> why do we have a president? 
you know, technically every eight years, as far you, it's, as much as you can do is eight years. And then if you look at other countries, like they have leaders that are, that are there for a long time, but when they talk about prime ministers and all that stuff, they're not in for lifetime. They're, they're come and go. So it's still the elites gaining mass control. And then all these little pawns just underneath them that look like rulers. They're just like, Oh no. I mean, we're going to give you enough knowledge to do this, but right. you can't know the true secrets oh, and I, you yeah, without a doubt america is full of that don't you think i mean it's um it's we've got our rulers and they're they're nice little puppets and we can look at them but and feel like and you know even i've mentioned where I, at least uh joe biden is keeping the norm right that i've said that um and previous presidents before joe biden it was nice that they were just keeping the norm um, this is why everybody gets so excited about Trump because they're thinking, well, no, Trump isn't the norm. He's, he's the guy that's trying to go after all these, uh, reptilian f factions and stuff. That's where, that's where uh, a lot of, uh, QAnon and whatnot, th th those, this is literally their Bible. This is their playbook that Joe, that, uh, Trump came in and he knows about this stuff and he's going to reveal it all. And so you got to be careful, you know, with this. It's really just such a strange territory. It's such a strange territory to be in. Yeah. Talking about the, you know, the, those in charge and stuff. I, I don't know. It's a strange one. It and I, I'd say this, and whenever we that's whenever someone mentions, you know, like this this crazy, you know, conspiracy with the government or you know with these other beings that's keeping us imprisoned. It's like after all of that, you don't think some people have decided to change their minds and just be like, Hey, everybody, this is what's been going on. Like somehow they've been able to keep all of this under wraps. Well, well they may not, have a few of those I mean, people, they've had but... some whistleblowers, but I mean, like, come on, do you really think us as humans are this clever and this, this collective well, and that's this, where the theory goes to, hold to it. this secret. Well, that's for why so the theory long? goes to, it's just well. the elites. Right. Uh, yeah. So I imagine, mean, imagine you're a Rothschild, for an example, right? And yeah. you and you turn eighteen, and your father brings you in with a bunch of the other elders and and other groups of the elites, and and they basically mm -hmm. do a, um, a crossbones type ceremony on you, and then they they read you in, and there's no reading out. So if you want to go against the grain. Oh yeah, my son son died in a tragic sailing accident. Right, right. It's, you know, so there's death. no going against the grain. Death sentence. So, but then yeah, all of a sudden, the Kennedys. Well, dude, I'm telling you, like, <laughs> could be all of a sudden, you know, um, you that guy dies. The young kid who's been read in now has children, and it's just this repeat. So, not you don't go outside of the bloodline, right? And um, I think it's just with the same bloodlines, the same elites. It's just a new generation, a new generation. Like presidents come and go, uh, uh, you know. Uh, but the Rothschilds prime ministers and the come and go. Will be forever. They're the forever, Kennedys man. Were, yeah, you know, generations and generations of wealth and. Yeah, I mean, there was uh, a there was a chart, and I don't know how much I I buy into it, but there was a chart that basically showed all the U.S. presidents except for like two were all related. That all yeah. could tie back to the same ancestors. Yeah. I've and I don't this. know how true that is. I don't either. Yeah. But it's it's interesting. It's interesting yeah. to think if that yeah. were the case, that there really is no choice. It's just the illusion of choice. But see, when you start and talking about all these weird things like that, like, is it far-fetched to think? I mean, if you believe in a heaven, if you believe in multiple dimensions, if you believe in aliens... If you believe in all these things, is it far fetched to believe that there's a grid system, a matrix that we can't see, that traps souls? I would say I no. Requires, Supposedly, they've I even. I think it requires more faith. That requires more faith <laughs> no, than some I, of these here's, religions. Here's the thing, though: <laughs> is I, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> Tell that to my. I hear what you're saying, but I would disagree. And yeah. the reason I would disagree is because it's it's a new theory to you, so it, it requires more to buy in. But, <laughs> yeah. but because you've been a Christian for your entire life. There's nothing to buy in. It's just it is what it is, right? But you have to have a lot. And the, but you have to Bible. have so much faith in people. Like, do you don't think that people are going to go mental and just lose their minds and just unload all of this stuff? Like, you really think humans are that clever and that secure I to don't be think, able to that's the thing, block though. this uh, secret? I would say this, jo uh, Josh. Go look at your dollar, and they've been putting this in our faces for years. 
years that the pyramid and the eye mm -hmm. that has a ton of meaning and uh, uh even the different there's all sorts of icon they mm -hmm. like to throw that stuff right in our faces and it's a challenge of anything like oh yeah let's let's tell them the truth and we'll sh reveal a lot of stuff but here's we, the thing though know, I, it's I, out there every day you know what i mean i don't think uh, it naturally comes from humans though if this is the case, I think it comes from entities outside to where if you go to, let's say, um, let's say 20, 20 families around the world, let's say 20, I have no idea. Go to 20 families around the world, thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. And you say, here's the deal. You can see what we can do. We need you to reign while we're gone. You pass it yeah. down. You keep everyone in check. And you better keep it quiet. You keep it quiet and, or we'll come back. So what do you do? I mean, this, this is a next level fear where all of us are running around and, that, and that's where you could even explain maybe even organized religion coming into play. How do we keep these assholes in checks and they're no longer scared of us? I don't know. Make up some, make up some uh, evil thing that'll happen to them if they're real bad. You know, Santa Claus doesn't come in the night type thing. So all of a sudden, everybody's just in check. And now here we are at a time in, in, in history to where we're starting to question things because we've become smarter. We've become more educated Right. We're starting to question things as the normal people. And then all of a sudden, when somebody gets a little too close to the truth, what happens? No, the plane goes down. They disappear. They're gone. So I don't know. I mean, I think maybe, Josh, we don't give enough credit <clears throat> to some I of these people. I still think there's way too much organization. I don't have that much faith in people. Not if there's only a I handful just of people. But, that, but even might, then, they, I just these don't people think we're might that not be, organized. I don't right, think we are might that not organized. Be people either, Josh. Which is Some true as well. Right. That, that's a whole yeah. other ballgame. Uh, yeah. We're talking about uh, possibly uh, beings that have been here for thousands of years, too. Yeah. yeah. Who have no real yeah. death cycle like bro. a human. Yeah, the skinwalkers. The, mm -hmm. the beings that you know, yeah. are all laughable to a lot of most of us. Right. Oh, but yeah. What if they're real? What if, you know, they're real, they're here and they've been doing projects and studying us for, you know, centuries and who knows, maybe they will return. Maybe we will see a big ship in the sky and then mm -hmm. we'll, you know, we'll have some real dis crazy debates to talk about, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even some of these people who have had near death experiences, you know, just the way that they explain everything, you know, and, and, and the other thing too, is they see this light, they communicate with this light. Um, and then in certain cases, the light just convinces them to go back, right? Keep them there. Okay. I have no idea. So are we a giant Petri dish? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do think is that do what, that's a, is that a big the gist it. of this, that we're a big Petri well, dish that, and we yeah. just kind of reincarnate well, and we just kind of go back the to Goldilocks. Slime? We're the this Goldilocks system, you know. I mean, this the 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 sheer odds of us even existing is absolutely mind boggling. When you think about how our satellite, the moon, works, and I mean, mm -hmm. it's insane uh, to think that you know this just happened in creation, which you know I don't think it did. I think obviously the Bible would say it was created and put there or if you're into even something beyond the Bible, you're going to say that, you know, well, okay, lizard people brought the satellite here and, or ancient sentient creatures, the Anunnaki, which probably look really strange animal like, you know, thanks to our uh, Egyptian hieroglyphics, we can get a glimpse of whatever they were drawing. Maybe, maybe it was all nothing, but. But in that sense, those these beings, whoever they are, the Anunnaki, given the current name, or Nephilim, if they do exist, uh, some of them are here, and then there's a big thought, chance they're going to return. I mean, that, that that that's what you hear in the, a lot of the uh, uh, pr TV programming, right? The programming that we're hearing is, oh, yeah, there's a very chance that they're going to show up again. and. And who knows what they'll do? Maybe they'll take us into a, a golden age. Who knows? But uh, a lot of people think that they that just going into like the uh, uh, for a moment about how or, or why that they even think that this grid would exist and our souls would feed in energy. 
um, maybe you've heard this, maybe you haven't, but people who know or, or believe that there are reptiles among us, they get a big kick, almost like a drug-like kick off of despair and uh, war or a baby crying or, you know, any kind of trauma. Supposedly, this is like a, a, a drug and it has something to do with our pineal glands and it gives off the thing and, you know, but that right there would make kind of what you're saying, Todd, you know, the energy, this, this continual spice melange that we uh, uh, give off when we have fights or wars or fear or anger. That's the energy that you're talking about. Sure. Um, and if you think about that, possibly, too. I mean, it's very powerful. We were yeah. very wit. And uh, another thing, you got uh, the Bob guy, uh, um, uh, what's Lazar? His name? Bob Lazar, uh, a, and I've heard this a couple times that when he's talked to or heard conversations between aliens and and uh, uh, higher ups, they've all said the same thing. Well, what are we? What are what are humans? Well, you're containers. Mm -hmm. What yeah. containers? Containers yeah. of what? Containers of a soul. Containers of, of energy. Of an energy, too. Of yeah, a, I mean, of a, and here's the thing, of man. A, a power. Of we a, all know that energy cannot die. That energy always exists, right? And uh, isn't it also true that there's no loss of mass ever, right? It might change. Yeah. We turn to dust, but there's still the same amount of uh, materials. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So with that being said, if energy always exists... Right. And this is scientifically proven now that energy just exists, that you can't stop energy. Right. Like even when even when you have these devices, like everything is putting something in motion. When you run power through something, it's putting something in motion. When you turn on your speaker and sound comes through and it generates those speakers to pulsate and create an audio wave that then moves forward. That's an actual thing. What do you think audio is? It's not nothing. I mean, that's what yeah, we that's amazing. what we forget. Air is not nothing. Audio is not nothing. Light is not nothing. They're all waves. It's all waves. It's all energy, and everything is a frequency. Yeah. So if you think about that, if everything is a frequency and everything is always in motion and energy never dies, it just it just transforms. Then what happens to us? And we're conscious beings. We are conscious beings, dude. Like we're aware. Speakers aren't aware. This light that we know, that we know aren't aware, but maybe they are. But we've been able to harness all these different molecules and all these different atoms and all these things together to create us, I think, as an antenna, as the sickest radio on the planet to, to tap into our soul. I think the silver cord thing. I think it's true. I think we're attached to a soul that exists outside. So when I think about these kind of things, when I think about this um, reincarnation trap, now get well, hold I, on with the silver cord yeah. though. When you leave your body, your silver cord's connected to the body. To the body. Well, that's what I mean. I think this. I think the silver cord, like our soul, our soul and consciousness, I think does not really exist within this body. I think it exists outside and, and wherever, heaven, the ether, I have no idea. I think it taps into Todd, this physical body, as a receiver. That's the cord. Sure. That's sure. the cord, right? So I think when we die, die, it's severed, right? We are no longer attached to this physical body. Um, so <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean... With that being said, it's hard for me to 100% buy into this reincarnation trap. Um, I believe in reincarnation. I totally do. Um, I think it's by choice, though. And again, this is what they say in the reincarnation trap, that that's the lie that they've told you, right? That they convince you that you want to go back, right? They convince you to go through the light. I don't know. I don't so know. The, I ultimate, think the ultimate debate is where does your soul get transferred well, yeah. I mean, in a yeah. way, we all agree the soul is being transferred in some way or fashion. Where does that soul go and what kind of control do we have? Well, and, uh, and also some 
near-death experiences talk of even darker dimensions too, right? Mm -hmm. That's the other part mm -hmm. we're forgetting. There are mm -hmm. like 10, 15% where it's not the beautiful source of light. It's more dark and disturbing than that. In, well, all, in, uh, all religions acknowledge that. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Most of the time it's pretty happy. Most of the time it's pretty peaceful. Well, that's what we focus um, on. But we all agree that there's more. We we can't understand that dimension. Yeah, we, we have, only live in one dimension, right? And I think the closest we can get to fully understanding this um, mm -hmm. is from some of these near death experiences, you know. And there are there are thousands of them to listen to. I mean, it, so what's the debate with the white light? Like how? Because when we ever hear when we hear about near death experience we hear about white light it's usually it's usually a happy thing correct well uh, that's it's like that a brilliant light that you feel look at. good yeah it's so a, that's kind of a, the perception it's the brightest with this light you've well. ever seen yeah. so this is again i'm i'm kind of with you Josh so when you say the, this so what's the what's the what's what is this thought process that it is a bad thing now like where well, is this coming from yeah well that's what this theory is all about that it's not necessarily a bad thing it's a trick thing right that that um, that there's this being that comes around, or beings that mimic what you what you believe, what you, what you long to see. Like if I long to see my mother when I die, they're sirens. They're sirens. They're sirens in space. Space so they're, sirens. Like so you know. So we deceiver. know we know from near death experiences that they see these vibrant lights. They see this, but there's always this one light, right? In a near death experience, there's always this one light, and when they look at that light, they go. I want to go there. And then somebody stops him and says, well, hold on. If you go there, there's no coming back. That's the other side, right? Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. it's not your time. You need to go back. Go back home. Go, go back, back home. Yeah. Go back to Earth. Thanks for being here. Go back home. Right. So so that's kind of – that's where I actually lean in this whole theory. Um, that That's where I struggle with this whole white light theory. So that's that's the one – that's what we're familiar with, right? If you go to that light, you're gone. You're in heaven. Um and this new theory says, no, 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 if you go to that light, um, that's where you want to go, but it's a trick to get you to reincarnate. It's a trap. It's a trap. And then <laughs> reincarnation trap. But it's a trap to get that, you to come back. Uh, I don't know what theory this is or story or whatever, but it was like where angels were actual demons. I mean, it's kind of golden compass like. Where sure. it's like we thought these were good beings that were guiding us but in reality they were bad and that was the whole concept of the golden compass and his whole I think, philosophy uh, i think uh, uh there's often been lots of debates about that um and yes the white light could be that way it's a trick i mean well, that's the whole uh, uh, that's I, I, the whole actually, this concept is that, of satan he's de it's deception it's just yeah, a concept of this deception. is exactly what a lot of christians actually believe too um a lot of older gentlemen that I know in in the faith who've written books and are very smart and I, I'll i bring up the uh, video uh, of the guy who drowned uh, we all like you know who said he went and saw the light and was peaceful and the, they would tell me Tim that's a uh, that's nice and all but I think that the near-death experience is actually the the lie mm. um, uh, and 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 these are from faith mm -hmm. people that are high up in, in but the maybe what I that's would call. the problem. I don't mean to cut you off, but maybe that's no, the but, problem. Yeah, that's the debate. The but they're saying the same thing. They would agree with us in a in a sense. They but their thing is that oh no, the problem like okay, one of them is uh, a, a very prolific author that I talked with literally the probably about uh, two weeks ago. Um, I'd miss him. He lives in North Idaho. I called him up and so. And he was very well known. I'm not going to say his name, but um, we talked about this. And I said, what do, you, what do you think about all this? And he said, Tim, the problem is when you hear these stories, they don't – and, of course, in his case, it would be they don't match up with the, the gospel. And what they end up doing is they're – and he gave me about four or five points that uh, that are telltale signs of that they're very occultic in nature. Uh, and you know, so when you hear the near death experience, you hear that you are God in a way you can become part of the source and have all understanding that you are part of God. You yeah, are that God. You are God. Tim is that God. Josh is God. We're all God. Right. 
we're all God and, and all is one. That's a lie, he would say. He doesn't agree with that. And, you know, I don't fully understand it. I don't know if I agree with him. I don't know. It's a very... Listen, uh, I, yeah, very, I hear what you're uh, saying. And, and here's... here's but, but he would say... I'm sorry, real yeah, quick. No, he sorry. would say that, that, that uh, this whole thing, uh, and a few of the people that I know, again, they would say that this is the devil working on the human soul uh lying to us and and not really revealing the full truth sure. and here's my counter argument my counter yeah. argument to that is what if the scripture is the devil and we're following well, i mean that. that's that's exactly what the the church of satan would say i mean not a, and and and, a, and a, i mean right their doctrine would be listen what do you, here's the thing what do you, what, but they would say that the 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 god is actually the the problem I don't think or Jesus sure, and all that, I don't think and God's that the devil problem. is out trying to yeah, yeah, yeah. make it right. I don't right think God truth. is a problem at all. I think here's the thing. I yeah. think we have thousands of people have recorded their near death experiences, and my mother in law is one of them, right? Yeah. And that's personal. Like there, mm -hmm. this woman doesn't lie. Like you know, and and we have great conversations. We talk about this stuff in depth. And matter mm -hmm. of fact, she's she's she is um, she's uh, Catholic. You know, they go to church almost every day. You know, so so for her to talk about a near death experience and to have it, and then to and then for somebody else to say, well, that sounds satanic in nature, that sounds evil in nature. I don't think so. I think if I think if we're really looking at things, we have a we have thousands of people who are, are recording a very similar experience as right. in as in as in as the, a scientist as a in scientist the steps. Then so as as a scientific yeah. proof that it's mm -hmm. been repeated. Over and over again. And also in that, we see that it is personalized. It is personalized mm -hmm. to you because you are a unique soul. You are a unique, a unique um, being. Um, so there's all these thousands of things that go, yes, there is something else. Here's the proof. And we go, no, 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 no. The proof is in this 6,000-year-old book. Um, this is the proof. Those are campfire stories, bro. There's probably some truth to them, but those are campfire stories. We have we have evidence right here, and that's what I'm saying is that's and that's where I get a little upset with people of faith who who discount that stuff and say, well, no, that's the enemy. No, well, I, no, I, I don't necessarily agree with the people I've been talking with. Oh, no, no, and I'm not I, arguing with you. I go, I'm just say, I'm stating my point of like right, like if if I believed wholeheartedly in my in my base of financial um, uh, reward. And and my livelihood was based on a certain thing. You better believe I'm not going to talk against that thing, right? If my livelihood is Christianity, and I'm going to support everything that's that right. stays for Christianity. So again, right. who 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 has more credibility? The extreme religious person who makes a living off. I wasn't. I'm not going to say that. I'm no, I hear it. you. You know, what I saying? hear you. But, there's the business side of it, uh, but there's also. Uh, uh, but then, yeah, why would they deny somebody who actually had an encounter after death? Why would they deny that and go, oh, no, that's just you're just being lied to? And I agree with you. I, 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 yeah, I'm I just letting know. you know yeah. that these people exist. There are lots of people of faith that are almost, in a way, agreeing with the uh, uh, the theory that we're talking about. The same reason yeah. that your mom never heard about someone dying of cookie dough. But she told you you're going to get worms. Right. But she yeah. doesn't know anyone who's has yeah. worms. But she's doing it out of security and out of just you know concern. Yeah, nice call. I still don't think dogs <laughs> nice are allergic to chocolate. I think they, we just don't want to feed them our chocolate. I think so that's tell fair. Our kids, I mean, don't feed that's my chocolate. chocolate. You know, I told kids are allergic to chocolate too. Don't eat my chocolate. Right, right, kids. But you know, yeah, I I think that. Uh, the science of it is there. That's where it is nice. You can, you know, read books where strictly is just science, right? The guy, uh, I think I, the, the near death experience that you sent us, Todd, months ago that spurred this all on, mm -hmm. he even links to a book in that video. And I went and got that book. Moody, uh, Dr. Moody. Yeah, Dr. Moody, who, um, who just not, uh, just wanted to Mad study I 40. Moody? <laughs> <laughs> who wanted to study 40 different people who didn't have second hand second hand accounts had first hand accounts of this experience mm -hmm. which is cool because then you can compare and do a scientific research on 
And all of them pretty much said the same. They all ticked the same boxes. Yes, it was unique to their own soul, as you put it. But mm-hmm. they still ticked some major categories, some major chapters or scenes that we'll all see or experience to a certain extent. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, and that's kind of if, the we, life if we go back to this. Um, oh, and that's the other thing they were saying, too, about this uh, reincarnation trap, that the life review was trickery as well. It was to only point out the bad things that you had done. Listen, you haven't done it right yet. You've got to go oh, back. Yeah. Right. And I was like, oh, man, yeah. that's really interesting take on it, you know. Uh, but I've also heard in a lot of these near-death experiences, it's not all bad. The life review is not all bad. It's ev- it's every emotion. It's everything that you've done yeah. within this life and in right. previous lives. Like, you know, right. joy, pain, suffering, uh, pain and joy for others. Like, everything. You feel everything. All in a blink of an eye. All in a blink of an quickly eye. quickly reviewed. Yeah. And, you know, another common thing, too, is like they, when they talk about um, – uh, some of these near death experiences that there is just a knowing there's communication without right. words. There is um, <laughs> just understanding. And there was one guy that I listened to the other day and he was talking about the difference. So when he died, he had his near death experience. He had, uh, cause he, he, we were trying to determine the factor between near death experience, hallucinate, 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 what? <sighs> Hallucinations. Good Lord. Hallucinations. 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 Um, so near death experience, hallucinations, and um, and drug induced, right? Because he's he's hooked up to all these things. He's in pain. They're trying to feed him drugs. So there's all these things that are going on. And also he was in a coma. So, but the way that he explained the difference between the three, how, well, how didn't you, how did you not just think that that was just, you know, the drugs that they were giving you? How did you not, you were in a coma. How was it not just a dream? But the way that he explained each was definitive. Like it was like, no, I knew the difference from when I was hallucinating. Like it was bizarre, odd, didn't make sense. He goes, I thought I was a cow one time. I was running around with cow legs. He goes, that was that, right? When I was in a coma, there's nothing. There was darkness. I don't remember anything. But this was entirely different. I felt uh, alive. I because uh, I told you alive. even my even my more alive because I told you even yeah. my mother in law said the thing that shocked her the most. And I've heard this in other NDEs. Mm-hmm. The yeah, thing that shocked too. them the most was I'm still me. I still mm-hmm. feel me. Right. Mm-hmm. It's not like I'm just this weird kind of floating orb. I still felt like me. That's fascinating. So, yeah, but and uh, but much lighter and more free. Oh yeah, no pain. They're free when they when yeah. uh, when the guy who drowns looks at his body. He's like, oh, there's that, there's that. That's me. Oh, but I yeah. feel so much lighter, and mm-hmm. I feel. And I've also heard oh, too when people nice. are looking this at their peaceful. body uh, as they're kind of drifting away, as they're looking at their body. Sometimes <laughs> it takes a minute to recognize that that's yeah. them because they it doesn't make sense. Like even right. the like the understanding of you were in a bad wreck, you know mm-hmm. you're that's you lying there, and mm-hmm. you know I've heard people say like as they were floating up and it, it wasn't odd that they were floating it felt normal and it felt good and it felt like good. it felt you felt free like you're finally free of mm-hmm. of a prison yeah so I mean I don't know I think there's so many things out there that point us to another realm that that we are from. Um, and, and grant, like, I'm not a very religious person. I've studied religion, but I'm not a very religious person, man. And for that exact reason, because I feel like there's so many things that point to there isn't, there's nothing. We can call it whatever we want. God, the source, whatever it is, it's there. So I don't understand how people can say there's nothing. Like we can have an argument. I, it had to have been designed. I, I mean, mean, it's just too. It's too. Even even the staunchest uh, atheist has admitted there'd have to be an ultimate designer. I mean, that's the thing of, is is of, for the for all. the eyeball, for the eyeball to become what it is, and yeah. do what it does. And are there flaws? Sure, there are flaws. But oh my gosh! But to do what it does, how long would that take? Now, yeah. um, Now remember. Homo sapiens, us, the only existing humans on this planet now, because there were quite a bit more, have only been around for 200,000 years as, as this, this form. Supposedly. Supposedly. Yeah. So 
how long before that were we little muddy things coming up? And as we were these little muddy things coming up, there were Neanderthals running around. There were a bunch of other human-like creatures running around, right? Where were we? Where were we? Were we developing better eyes? No, dude. No. <laughs> like, it, like, even if you look at it from that point, like, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that there were all these other beings, human beings running around, but we were still working stuff out. Um, I want to throw even one more thought in there. Uh, I've recently had this mulling around in my head for quite a while because it was such a, an interesting thought, but somebody, some video I'd seen, uh, they were talking about how we're actually the odd ducks a on the planet. Uh, if you look at most of nature, you have bears with fur, dogs with fur, ducks have feathers. I mean, lizards are scaly, and I guess they don't have fur. But still, on a whole, they're the, the creatures on this earth were actually suited to or designed, created for the extreme conditions of this planet. Right. The weather patterns, the sun, and then you come to Homo sapiens. Yes, we may have dominion and um, have a sentient understanding that we're alive, or we can, you know, we we're self aware. But our skin burns in the in the sun, you know. Our yeah. and so we're we're kind of the almost like the odd duck that we're the odd ones. And then if you take all the, dude, one hundred, we're the astronauts. Yes, and if yeah. you take evolution in any form. Macro or micro, really doesn't matter. If you take any form of evolution, uh, a bear that lives in the snow becomes a polar bear, right? Yeah. Like, okay, I could buy that. A bear Lateral that lives evolution. in, in uh, Georgia, United States, becomes a, a grizzly bear. Okay, I could buy that. Or black bear. Yeah, <laughs> I could buy that. Where's our evolution? I, I well, that's, I'll tell you right. like what you just said. I don't think, I don't think the the um, Caucasian Homo sapien is native to this planet. Doesn't make any sense. The the sun causes us cancer. The sun harms us. The 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 entity of life. We grew up in environments where it was very rainy and cloudy. <laughs> For two hundred thousand years, <laughs> well, some believe that I believe uh, it, there was. Uh, but uh, but hold on, Todd. Some people believe that th this is where the guy in uh, who built the Ark in Kentucky, the scientist from I think he's a Australian originally. Uh, his name is eluding uh, me, but I'll think of it. Anyhow, he uh, uh, had arguments with Bill Nye, the science guy, the, the whole debate, and of course, he looked like the idiot, idiot at the end. He did, yeah. Um, but he believes that there was a canopy of ice that surrounded the earth that protected us for, uh, quite a while. And then, um, through, uh, like Captain some America. sort of, yeah, it was like a shield of, it was like, we were in an egg, like practically like an egg shell of, of, uh, like basically our ozone, uh, our ozone, uh, was more than just a, uh, um, just a gaseous layer. It was kind of a frozen uh, layer. <gasps> you've seen the you've seen us. the Disney movie Atlantis. It's about the air pocket, a whole civilization, <laughs> and then it developed and it it, it crusted, and then it was like, well, eh? yeah. So, but then due to certain circumstances, and of course, the we all know, uh, and every culture in the world has the this. Uh, thought that something cataclysmic happened and we had a flood. The uh, Ken Ham, that's the guy's name. Ken Ham believes that that ice that had been there for years protecting us, making the earth a tropical environment all around the planet, not just in one location, all over the earth. There were no um, biomes of deserts and, you know, jungles. It mm. was just jungle well now uh when that when we had the cataclysmic event the flood happens all that ice rains and causes the flood there is also waters from the deep that show up and cause a flood but then um uh the this is where we start having the weather patterns now right because that canopy is gone uh now we've got weird hurricane seasons and 
you know, we're getting holes in the ozone and the sun. We can see the aurora borealis now because that protective layer uh, broke, you know. Well, I will say this, too, that Ken Ham also believes – I've been to there. I, again, I've been I there. know it's Ken Ham. Ken Ham also is. believes that uh, the Earth is actually 3,000 years what, old. 6,000 to or whatever. Three, yeah. yeah. Right. Like he, Which – and that – I mean, I okay. Well, I then, will say this. If, if there is a god, yeah. right, and he said – that I built this place in seven, six, seven literal days, um, and he's God. Well, I mean, yeah, he's God. He could. God is something that we can't even fathom. So why would we argue that? Now, did it happen, or did God just say, okay, look, let just tell people this. This is basically it. That day one, I did this. Day two, I did this. Day three, just so that they could understand it, so they could even pass the narrative down to the next kids, right? Uh, it would be really hard for God to go into the science of all of it, right? Mm -hmm. So do you, think, do you think that God gave all these messages to the Neanderthals as well? I don't even know. I, I I don't necessarily believe in a Neanderthal, unfortunately. I know what? you might be able to. I don't, I don't know. I, 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 that to me, I have to. There's physical evidence of a Neanderthal. There's not physical evidence but of a what, god. What, <laughs> what makes it different well, than a less evolved human? I have to. I, I but I just don't know enough about it. I'd have to see this Neanderthal. I, I know they have Lucy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I, I don't know, man. I don't think we evolved like. I don't know. I have a hard time thinking that we did like that. You know, the picture of the ape going into a walking man. I I just don't – I personally don't think that that's what happened, but I think it's something even stranger, you know, that it was more of a uh, – you want to talk about Petri dish. We talked about that earlier. We we probably are. Uh, well, it says in the Bible, right, that we were created in – let us make man in our own image. So what what does that mean? Like that that's – that sort of science is even weirder, if you ask me. We'll take, we'll take some dirt and we'll put our. Um, we're gonna make this being like uh, in our own image. Like that's what is that? You know, so that could be where we're talking about the ancient Sumerian stuff. Might even make more sense in so, uh, why we came about. In fact, even ancient aliens would tell you that the Neanderthal uh, man was here. Sure. And then uh, the uh, Anunnaki went, "Hey, hunt one of those Neanderthal guys down. They they they're at least bipedal and they can walk around. We just got to give them some sentience, right? Some self awareness. Let us make, you know, them like us, kind so, of, right? Right. You but, see what I'm saying? But you do. You are like you do but know. There's no that there, evolution. There's no. I don't there think there's are an eight evolution. Eight human species out there. confirmed that we're on this planet. Well, that, okay, that's fine. But you say you don't believe but, in Neanderthals. No, I'm, well, I'm I, with I mean, Tim, I'm though. Saying, I'm think saying I'm, it's... I'm with Tim. It's, it, we, were, we don't come from apes. We come from a different species that was similar to that apes. There is a Petri it's dish, different. the science the science of it. There really is a... Okay, let's take the, got that little thing over there, that, that ape, that gorilla, that other... I wish I was a gorilla. Don't you think if if a if something can go extinct, that we may have had gorillas or apes that we just never even knew existed? They they went extinct long ago, so yeah, we're gonna find their bones. But does that mean that they're us? No, I think. Well, we've no, I been think I think that science, genetically science altered is or whatever. smart enough now to tell the difference between a an ape and a human species, like they're different, like they're. There are different species than an ape. Like they, they're pre yeah. us. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, uh, but I don't. Uh, see, we showed up on the map about two hundred thousand years ago. Yeah. From my understanding, out of the blue, out I'm of too nowhere. screwed up. I, I have to kind of take, you know, like in the Shark Tank when they go, "I'm out." <laughs> I, I'm too screwed up with religion. Not screwed up. Religion and saying. my background, it, it throws me off too much. And I get and that. I, I'm not going to. I'm not necessarily going to be leaning on the science of it so much. Right. Where and, I where they say, "Oh no, you were an ape, and then we evolved into this upright right one." I just don't see that. And Tim, I, I know I you're you're extremely open minded to to all kinds of things. So so this is what I'm about to say is not directed at you. 
at all. Yeah. It's directed at the mass of people who are very religious or grew up religious that they kind of like maybe your, your friend who wrote the book, you're so stuck in a mindset, not you, Tim, in general, I got you, right? I got you. you're so stuck in a mindset that there is no other alternative, no matter what you're shown. I mean, let's look at this as, as what's happening today, right? Donald Trump's convicted of 34 uh, crimes, <laughs> right? And yeah. I see people posting, I'll vote for him. I'm, I'm more him than ever. I'll vote. Like, he's definitely my guy now, R- right? So so I, t- Donald Trump could shoot somebody in the face on live TV and everybody be like, that's my guy. Well, he, he's even said that. But, but here's my point. My point is, is that people get so stuck in a belief system that they can't see outside of it, right? And and so I understand even what you're saying. Like a you've bubble. been you've been so brought up this way that it is like even for you to believe some of these far fetched things is kind of odd, right? But you believe like you listen to it and you take it in. I like and, to go there. I like to see what my brain right. I mean, and I love that. And that's what I love ultimately, about Ultimately, it's all. Yeah. It's, I don't throw any eggs any in, in in any basket. Sure. I'm just trying to. Again, just live life and care about others and, and make it through to the other side, and then I'll, I'll, I'll let you know if I can. But Please do. I probably won't be able to. Um, but it scares me. It scares me how people don't consider it, right? Like I said, even though this, this um, reincarnation trap seems far-fetched, um, I don't know that I personally buy into it. I could see how it could be a thing, um, yeah. but it's interesting to have a conversation about it. It is interesting. It is interesting, especially with this kind of, um, oh, um, we may not be going into a renaissance of this, but at least in our podcast, you know, it's interesting that we started talking about near-death experiences, and then maybe our computers heard us and started feeding us the algorithms of, maybe. well, have you heard of this theory? Right. <laughs> um, I, and I want to go back to the Neanderthal. I'm not saying they don't have physical... <laughs> Uh, fossils okay i uh, they do right okay good for them right they found all sorts of crazy fossils they found uh hell the there's a, a being that they're looking at in mexico right now with three fingers elongated fingers and they've actually determined that it's real uh you know I, i'm know, not saying that you're the not conversation finding... with that part of that too was like this could be another human species right i know they, that's yeah. one of the things they were saying about that and sorry i'm not saying uh, but i don't think so, uh, yes, I believe in evolution, but I believe in more of a lateral, slow-paced yeah. evolution that is only interspecies. Micro. Mm-hmm. Micro. We're talking, if you have a moth that's being eaten by a bunch of birds, and then one year that moth grows white limbs and speckled whatever, and it can't... Now the birds can't see it. That's what I'm. I believe more in that. Well, that of, makes more kind sense. Kind of like along the lines too of like more and more human males are are losing their hair, right? Like their hair on top yeah. of their head, you know, because it's not it's not necessary to keep us warm anymore. You know that kind right. of thing, right? And who knows where we will, as a species, uh, continue to do? But it's we're not all of a sudden going to just turn into some other like one day. No. You know, we're going to all of a sudden my my arms are our brightest lights and, <laughs> you know, I don't have skin, the need of skin anymore. I mean, whatever the next evolution of man would be, yeah. which would probably be some strange energy or something. I don't know why but, our saliva doesn't kill bacteria like dogs. Yeah, that right. That would be helpful. Well, because we, we're again, not from we, here, dude. We're That's not what really, I'm saying. We're the astronauts. We're the astronauts. <laughs> but um, oh. but uh, no, I, I just don't. That's that's what I'm saying. So again, if it goes to a uh, an intelligence saying, well, let's take the bipedal creature, the the old 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 ass version of an ape that we've never even considered existed, and let's mix a little bit of this and a little dash of that and throw some sentience in there, then I could see, yeah, wow, okay. The uh, a designer built us and made us in his own. You know that's that's what I'm talking. About. I think that's what happened to us. Uh, you know, and and that designer, by the way, is very alien. Does he sure. exist on this planet? No. Sure. Well, you know, and that kind of I'm 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 with you, Tim, on that because if you look at it, you go, 
how did we just show up? If they were, because if you look at Homo erectus and Neanderthal, if you look at these guys, they're very similar. And and yes, I'm with you too. Is there, there's a little bit more of an ape like, right? Thicker bones, uh, different head structure, smaller cranium, right? For a smaller brain. There's all these kind of things that indicate like these were very, these were more primitive beings than we are, right? And then all of a sudden, there's us. Yeah. I mean, that's it's the science. story. It's a science experiment. Right. And I, I mean, uh, as much as, so I think I'm more like you, Todd, where I go, I, after much of year, you know, be, years of being here and thinking about it and really trying to hear both sides, I don't think that we came from like a fish or some, you know, I just don't think that. But I definitely can see where, yes, the earth is rather ancient. The Bible can only give us so much. Bible and any ancient text can only give us so much insight into what really happened. But if we really saw it and we're really transported there, if we could just time travel, we'd go, oh, oh, mm-hmm. oh, it's it's much stranger than I thought. And you it, know, and it makes you think too, like with the Alexand- the Library of Alexandria, right? If you think about that place, and it was said that that place consisted of records predating the flood, predating sure. the flood. So, for an example, let's say let's say that um, um, Atlantis existed, uh, and Atlantis had all this text and all this knowledge from tens of thousands of years, and then there was this great flood coming. So then they stored all these all this text all, all that they could. And then everything settled back down, and because they're saying like even where Egypt is and where uh, all that all that information was, that that was just um, kind of a rebuild. That those pyramids yeah. were there that they kind of rebuilt. Well, let's say well, now they're looking. Correct me if I'm wrong. They're looking in the eye of the Sahara. Have you heard about oh, this? Oh yeah, yeah. Where that, was, that was circles. A, that was and, Atlantis, is what they're thinking. They now. think it's a. <gasps> is yeah, it Wakanda? It's covered in a, it's not. Well, it could be Basically, Wakanda. Well, what if Atlantis was Wakanda. Wakanda? Just this Maybe. perfect Maybe. harmony type place but anyways the library of alexandria i mean that was a theory that it was just filled with all this knowledge from tens and tens of thousands of years hundreds of thousands of years of uh of information and then and where where did it go it just got burned by some emperor or? it got burned it got burned to the well, ground yeah because why not why not because again what it was the that's an old well, adage Mongols, we all maybe well those who control the past control the future well, i mean, I mean you, you can take that into current burn. times you can take that into current times with sure. with some of these like uh, isis and all that stuff going around destroying um antiquity right they, right. they if you get rid of it 100 years from now no one will even know it existed exactly right? so that's the plan that's kind of even what the christians did with their crusades right they went around and they destroyed because no you're wrong whatever you think you're wrong i don't care if you thought about it for 10,000 years this is the new way yeah. So boy, that yeah, and what a. But there, and then you get spiritual about it, and there, there's there's some thoughts about maybe God wants that to happen because it just gives us more control. Babel and right? the idea, and and I, and I I look at God as a as a benevolent being, but the idea is that we need to be less concerned about control and more concerned about service and. You know, caring well, I mean, for each other, and sometimes we develop these high, these these really high knowledge stuff, and it, it gets us off the path. I'm, I'm just throwing that in there. That's yeah, some for sure. Oh, you mean like we advance? Well, heck, I mean, right now uh, we live in Tower of Babel too. That's we've what got, I'm saying. Yeah, we've got iPhones and computers. We're all mm-hmm. connected like never before. Mm-hmm. And you think that God would go crap? They're doing it again. I gotta switch up their language again. <laughs> well, that's the thing too. Is that's know? where I go with. Yeah. Like, I'm with you. I, I, it I, is. Have you heard Gen Gen Z's talk? It's it's a different well, language. Right. <laughs> yeah. But no, there, they, there ain't no tongues of fire on that one. No, Josh, I'm with you though. Yeah. I think that God is benevolent. I think he is. Uh, I think he is pure uh, light. I think that you know, if you look at the the um, the God of the Old Testament. Um, Who's to say that that's not evil? That's not um, a false god. Who's to say that that's not a a different being? Um, because it's night and day. It's night and day. Yeah, I, I I've talked about that with with our small group before. Mm-hmm. I definitely think that um, 
Yeah, there's the people always say this. This is a very common argument. Like, who, what, what happened with the God of the Old Testament versus the new, the guy that came in the new? Boy, he was not much nicer. He got laid. Uh, right. Uh, but I don't. One, I mean, I think that if you have a task, a goal set upon to save something that you created, and you don't. I, we don't fully understand ancient man. I mean, yes, there were probably very um, good societies, but also I think there was a lot of, uh, as of course the Bible will tell you, right? Which is again, you have to have faith in that. But and it'll say that the people were pretty evil to each other, real evil, really. But there had to have been a lot then. of good too. Yeah, I, I. But I think on a whole, we were on a trajectory, a pattern that looked darker than ever sure. before like it was very uh the child sacrifice sinister yeah well, it just sinister like i don't we were know, destroying ourselves from we the were. inside out slowly and but we were and when you look at god's direction to this small group of people he you starts see out that with today. what does he say he says you see that town over there don't talk to them you see that over there? don't talk to them. and it isn't just because he's got god's being mean he knows that one they're gonna um destroy the community of the people he's trying to get through a real crazy uh moment in history but he also goes man they just don't clean their food right he knows about germs and he's not going to sit there and try to explain to israelites about germs he just knows that they don't cook their food, they eat weird stuff, and they're they're going to die from disease. I got to get this group of people through to this thing, this goal that I have for all of humanity, mm-hmm. and that is to really make the world a, li- a little more forgiving, a little more loving at the end of the day. Now, and so the you know, when it sounds like you're talking with a guy who's just a jerk. He's trying to just ter- steer people, the, this group of people. Imagine you're God, and it's almost like a strategy game, right? A real-time strategy. you got to steer away from that tower because they're going to kill my people, and i got to steer them away from that because they're going to kill my people. And i got a goal to attend to that is a bigger goal, a better goal for this whole earth that I'm you know, established. So you tell me. I think that, that's, that's the argument sure, that I think I is, makes that. more sense. I, I, and I don't think he, he's a different God. He's the same one. We're just seeing it differently because so you tell me, okay, we don't understand what he had to do to get his uh, goals accomplished. Sure. So you tell me whether you think I'm a good person or a bad person. Here's the scenario. Mm-hmm. I get married. I start this family. I have a whole bunch of kids, right? But I don't really care for the way that any of these kids are acting. They're not really following my rules. Even my wife, she's not following my rules. So I decide one day I'm going to murder all of them. I kill them all, right? Uh, And then I go and I start over with a new family. And this family's going, okay, they're following some of my rules, but I don't don't know, you know? maybe Maybe I'll be nicer. Maybe I was the problem. So I'm going to be a little bit nicer and not kill them just yet. Am I a good guy? Am I a good guy? Well, you get into Job. I mean, God allowed his whole family to die. Am I a good guy? Well, uh, Todd, uh, (laughs) one, we're comparing apples to oranges here. You're a human being. You're going to have Made in his image, bro. I was made in his image. I hear you. But you're also... The cult of Todd. (laughs) You're also uh, bound to the laws of this that govern this world, right? Like the fact that if you do said acts, you're not going to make it to the second family because somebody's going to throw you in a prison, right? You know, you're going to have consequences for the things that you do. Um, but imagine I don't have consequences. But, but if you're a cult. Uh, but if you're outside of of time and space seeing all of it before it happens like some sort of muadib, right? But then you'd you already know, you already knew time. right off the bat like these people are going to suck. But but you've made promises and you're going to keep those promises no matter what. See, that's another reason why I go with it. this is a very hands-off god. I I in, well, it, I mean, you're not alone. A lot of uh, yeah. our founding fathers believe that he's a. Uh, uh, they believe he came and did his thing and then left, and he's doing other things. Right? Is that pantheism? Uh, uh, no. Yeah, uh, no, no. It, um, it's another theism. 
where he he like yeah. he just he just he he, he did his did thing the spark and, and then he's he's right. he doesn't um interfere. He might come back check on us he, but he doesn't he, interfere. Yeah. yeah, and, and that's depending on what that kind of viewpoint of a god like that it, uh, it doesn't seem very omnipotent omnipresent. I I think that right. if you're truly god, if you're truly god, not only um are you the mere fact that we're even trying to debate about God right. in this world? Well, we is have a no joke clue because it's like an ant trying to debate about where Todd's going to go on his, you know, on his day to day routine. And if a bunch of ants were I sitting there fighting the over deists, what is deist. it? You know, but I mean, deists, deists, deists. But like the a fact that you know some little creature trying to guess what I'm doing with my day to day routine, it would be laughable, right? If we if we went we were to shrink down to an ant and have ant conversations because of some you know device that allows us to talk to them yeah. and go, what do you what do you think of my day to day? Well, you open the big portal to <laughs> go to the thing. That, you know, I mean, they would totally get it wrong, right? Right. And that's what we're doing. Oh, for we're, sure. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I don't. We're think, all doing. I don't that. think we have any clue. Uh, you know, it, it's just fun to kind of speculate. But when I think about. God and I what I say what I mean by what I just said that I don't think he is omnipresent um I think you know that's if we're looking at a god that is um like us like a this kind of being god up there I think god is 100% everything I think it is in the light it is in the sound waves it is everywhere in everything yeah. at all times um I think within that it knows how to create right it created the universe, but I don't think it. Cre- I don't think the universe created like that. I think it well, took time. And even it let let's. I, I have thought this through before. Let's let's say that he did. And you go well. H- hey, well, how come things don't date appro- or why they date so old? Right when we were carbon dating. Well, I mean, we're talking about a being who's everlasting, eternal. We just don't. We can't. That that right there is unfathomable. Who's to say that his building blocks aren't as ancient, you know? And no wonder it it tracks scientifically the way it tracks, right? Wow, this is 100, 600 million years old. Well, yeah, I mean, we're talking about a being who's eternal and is using materials throughout the universe that he's been given to, to task life into. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's going to use some ancient materials, don't you think? Sure. I mean, you know, the, the 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 again, the mast isn't doesn't go away; it's always there. Uh, well, he's just using that same material, the same DNAs and the, the things that he could just turn into the molecules that he wants to turn things into. And yeah, it's gonna it's gonna c- come across as old to us trying to figure out the timing of it, right? But what if he did it in seven days? Hey, he's God; he could do whatever he wants. That's the problem. We're talking about God. What is the definition of God? Well, here's unknowable, sure, unfathomable, sure. Un, uh, amazing being that we can't even. Could, it's like here, let's, a joke trying to figure it out. Yeah. And so, what if he could do it in seven days? What if they're right? Well, they uh, and even if they're wrong, it's okay. I, I really don't care either way because well, yeah, we're here. it doesn't matter you know, either way. I mean, the Again, point is we're here. Fun to think about it. So here, okay, here. Oh, sure. Here's another scenario. If you think of God as as he created. Let's also think of the way that a child is created, right? It takes nine months for a human child to be fully formed, right? But when you Mm -hmm. look at it, why does it take nine months? Well, because the cell, which we don't understand, right? Mm -hmm. We we can study it, but we have no idea really what it is. By the way, real quick, side of, you want to get crazy with the kind of tools that, the tools that exist at a micro level, at that level. Oh gosh, dude! The, you don't think there's a designer? Look at the micro that's level my point. of those little tools. That's my little point. Motors with things that we can't even recreate. Exactly. That's my point. So you look at this tiny little thing, and everything that's inside of that to make it work, and the electricity that's inside of that to power it. Right? Mm-hmm. Like it's yeah. so so fine. You know, so small, so tiny. Incredible small Incredibly tools. Incredibly small tools that are that working. Are all designed? And, all, that no, and in my mind. To me, they all have a that's job. God. But they're programmed. They're programmed with a job to do, right? Yeah. So all of a sudden, why does it take nine months? Because all these things that are programmed that already know what to do, they already they know, know what, what to do. do. Why doesn't it just happen? They were happen? built to do it. And that's why I think God didn't do it in seven days, because it takes time. I don't, I don't think he did it. Right, either. but it's, I don't, things I, take I, time. 
Um, and I don't think I, I think the narrative was just passed down so that we could just make sense of it. Let, how do you, literally how just do you tell explain what week. we just explained in this podcast two thousand years ago? Yeah, they're gonna look at us they'd and be go, like, put them go, on stake, huh? burn them. They'd go, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, 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 that doesn't make None any of that makes sense. sense. But so, but yeah, if you so think you got to use you got to use for children. You got to use, uh, you know. Oh, day one. This is day one. Day one. Here's day, day two. Day one. And... Two things collide and, <laughs> and create a spark that then both are coded to work together to create yeah. you. Right. What the fuck? Well, but even down <laughs> to... That's crazy. Let, let's go back to the Big Bang, right? The Big Bang is often how we, we all got here through a big, huge explosion. And have you heard... These, you know, scientists try to figure out how this is even possible uh, that in a nanosecond of time, it just explodes into all that we know. Mm -hmm. I mean, this infant, uh, who knows how small the universe really was. And all of a sudden it just sparks into existence. Right. And, you know, even that is uh, in crazy to oh, any atheist, any scientist, because the energy that it would be required uh, to do all that and create what, what it finally created is, I mean, but, it's crazy. But let's go back it's to insane. let's go back to the let's go back to the child. Yeah, a tiny egg, right? That you can't see with the naked eye, a right. sperm that you cannot see with the naked eye collide. Let's right. now match that. Let's now match that into outer space. Nothing. Right. Right. They collide. Right. And it doesn't just form planets all of a sudden. It doesn't just form but a baby right. all of a sudden, but things start to multiply, right? But there would have had to have already been a code written. Well, I, I think that's where it's like God spoke and it... So it, this is what I'm talking about, about a, about a God who is hands off. Like he wrote the code, right? And I think by hands off, I mean like, you know, I don't think that God is diving in day to day. I think it's created. He's... It's uh, it's everywhere, so he's always aware. Yeah. It's not like he's watching down with a telescope. He's it's everywhere. No. It's always aware, even within us, right? Right. Um, so I think he just he, it's there, right? And we know that even with human thought, just thought alone, that we can reverse ailments, right? I mean, think about it. If you're super anxious, I've had this happen to me, right? All of a sudden, you're having heart palpitations. All of a sudden, you're having a difficulty breathing. All of a sudden, your gut's turning and churning, and you just can't get control of it. And that's day in, day out. You are ill. You change your mindset, right? You get out of that anxiety. Maybe it's with medication. Maybe it's with other things. But you get out of that. All that starts to fix itself, right? Right. So that's kind of what I mean. I think God is within I, mean, I think there's so much power. And I think when we say, and, and my wife will slap me for this 100%, <laughs> but when we say that we are not God, I don't think that's true. And now I don't think it's like, I am God. Everyone do what I say. No, I'm saying we are all God. We're God all like. part of it. God is within us. God is within everything. God is within this light. Well, I mean, I, I guess if you say God is omniscient, I mean, he, there you are. He's, he's everywhere. He's everywhere. I mean, he's, he's in our, he's in us. He's in all our, he's the force. He's, you know, uh, and I, I agree. I do think to a certain extent that God, we give God way more, um, like the weight of his judgment on a wee little tiny us is a little silly. If you think about it, um, you know, the only thing I think, God is concerned with humanity is that <clears throat> not necessarily that I, you know, got up this morning and did a sin, but that I, I, I think he's more concerned with the quality of our life the, due to the, the, the choices that we make, right? He understands sure. it. See, it's exactly like you're saying. He understands that if you could just think lovingly and peaceful and patient and kind every day, waking up, going how can i be more loving and patient and gentle and kind and self-controlled and you know um as it says uh, if you if you remain in me you'll bear fruit and the mm -hmm. fruit is those those things um then it will make your life a little more bearable right you, For sure, you know yeah. and i i think you know you, you if you can just 
wake up and not be so crazy and anxiety and not want to do bad to your wife or your kids or not want to do bad to your neighbor. Hopefully that's a ripple effect. One, it'll be a ripple effect. If everybody woke up one day and just started being nicer to each other, how much of a better world we'd live in. Yeah. But then it also would, yeah, I mean, like, that's how I think hands off God is. He's not sitting there going, Oh, I can't wait to judge the world. Exactly. Like a yep. lot of it is, I think it is that, Oh no, what you're doing to yourself. It, I had so much more planned for you Listen, than just yeah. to live in that, that sick um, thing you're living in. Yeah. 100%. You know what I'm I mean, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I mean, if you think, if, if people think that, that you are not a part of God and that you don't have some of the powers that God has, I think you have to wake up and look at that, right? Like you have the power and we've talked about this before. You have the power to sit across from somebody, your child, your wife, your girlfriend, your husband, your boyfriend, you have the power to sit across from them, look at them a certain way. And in the tone of your voice, destroy them, make their day or destroy their day, build them up. Right. And there's nothing there. You're not touching them. You're not doing anything physical to them. But in the, your words, the, in your expression, in your tone, mm-hmm. everything, in your mannerisms, yeah. everything. Like that's power. We all have the that. other thing. The other thing we have to remember too that I, th- this is just my humble opinion on it. Uh, with so what we're saying, right? We've got, we've got uh, God. Old Testament God, he's like a real mean guy, and then the New Testament, and oh, we got all these like. Well, we're saying okay, hey, but if we remain in like this good place with God or this life, and we and we project that onto others, we'll we'll have a better life, we'll have a better uh, upbringing, our kids will be better, they'll be healthier if we're constantly doing positive things. The problem I think there therein lies, though, is there is an enemy to that idea there is a force that does if you want to call it the devil or if you don't whatever it is there is a negative force that has been allowed to run amok and wars against those things it's been allowed to for whatever reason war and make us struggle with those things you know what I mean? I do. So that's why it doesn't just come so naturally. Sure. I wish, uh, something wars against us to make it harder to just do the right thing. Well, certainly. I mean, you if you think me? about it, there's there. everything in this world exists off positive and negative charges, right? I mean, if you look at the way our Earth spins, if you look at the magnetism on our planet, like everything is a positive and a negative, right? A mm-hmm. yin and a yang. Absolutely everything. So you have God, good, devil, bad, right? So what is that actually? Can it be explained by science? Well, not quite yet. Will it someday? Yeah, because I I personally don't believe in a devil. I don't believe in a hell. I don't think that exists. But there is a negative. There's always a negative, right? Yeah. I mean, with a positive comes a negative. Right. And it might be internal, but unfortunately, the fact that it's even internal, it's still a thing. It's still a force. Oh, it is a force. Yeah. 100%. That, uh, yeah. Obviously, the Bible is going to say, and the Bible isn't even necessarily, people think the devil is all throughout the Bible. He's not. He's There's part portions. Well, there's the argument he is, that he was included later on, too. Later on. Mm-hmm. I've heard that. Yeah. I, I And I don't know. I mean, um, I know the Catholic uh, Bible has a, maybe a little more, like, books on it that uh, we don't in the Protestant Bible doesn't have, you know, but anyway, my, uh, the, uh, if it back at the beginning where we have this narrative about two people in a garden and the snake and the, you know, he for, tells them about this apple. That one's a tough narrative for me. I mean, sure. anybody, it should be tough for anybody yeah. reading it going, what? Like really, really tell me what. So it how did that was. turn like, into like, eight that billion people sense. that look different? Huh. <laughs> What's that? I said. Well, then how did that turn into eight billion people that look that different? look different? Right. <laughs> well, and I again, I I think like it was the Bible. It was the fire campfire story that you know has certain things in it that maybe you can take away from it, but it's still just for children. 
right? And we make it out to, a lot of Christians make it out to be, no, this is exactly what it was. There was a garden and two naked people. And you go, but was it? You know, that's what I do. Anyway. I go, well, for I, sure. I can't, because I've got a lot of questions. Yeah. You know, when mean, I read. Everybody has all these different um, uh, groups of people and, and um, they all have different origin stories. Now, but, but, uh, but I have a point to this. So ultimately, though, there still is a bigger, just like the creation story, there's still a bigger narrative or a bigger idea that one could withdraw from these children's stories. And it is that this force of negativity was brought about because of whatever we did. We did something and a major force of negativity. We listened to a negative force of we listened to a negative force, the the serpent, and we went along with it. And now that caused an even greater divide between a positive force and then brought in a way bigger amount of negative force to this earth, right? Mm-hmm. And I, yes, you could say to the to the Christian faction, oh, well, that's your devils and your demons and all that, uh, perhaps, but it definitely caused a fraction fracture in um what what it what had once been to where we are now there was a fra- there was a difference there was a time where we, like we're saying the um you know atlantis what could it have been maybe it was a wonderful place and then something changed and a force of evil was allowed to work upon us like it had never been allowed to do before and now ipso facto here we are today mm-hmm. De- still dealing with the remnants of that curse of whatever that was whatever whatever that tale now of course again it's a serpent in the in the child the children's story but um we're still affected by that and i and you know how long will we be will we be affected by that i don't know i think i think that's Um, i think that's a universal rule i think it just is but it might not because i think that um there is also in that narrative that all things are made right. And that, that stuff is kicked away and completely rid, rid of. So it, and it, yes, it would be out, out of balance, say with uh, the yin and yang, but um, I don't know. Supposedly the, that the force of evil that wars upon us, the wars upon man and humanity here on this earth, at least uh, will disappear. Now I don't know about the rest of the universe, yeah. but definitely on this earth, this earth has a strange condition that's happened to it through I just think weird warring factions of sure. dimensions we don't even know about. Yeah. I mean and we won't be able to understand anyway. But and again I could be wrong I'm just saying don't forget like there are the, through the narr- through the children narratives there are major points you could bring out and go yeah but that does make a sense why we still feel cursed today. Does that make sense? Yeah it does and and I I wonder about that sometimes simply because I feel like humans have been conditioned, whether it be religion or some outside entity, something, I don't know. I think sure. I think humans have been conditioned to uh not praise or or condemn ourselves. What I mean by that is uh, things went good. Praise God. Well, <laughs> what did you do? What did you do for things to go good? Because we all know people who just their lives are good. Why are their lives good? They always think positive. They don't think negative. They treat everyone well, right? So things they're decent. They're decent. Things come their way all the time. Wow, how lucky. No, not luck. They put the work in for that to happen. All right. Sure. And then on the reverse. Um the person who's addicted to drama. Right, drama. I mean, and always, their lives are surrounded always bad, by drama. Right? Their lives are always bad. Yeah. So, so they don't give credit to that. Then it's quick for us to say, well, that was the demons that did it. That was the evil. Of course. That was the evil that came not, in. Yeah, no, 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 I'm I just saying. I don't think that's right either. I sure. don't think that's right either. I think that's just an excuse. But, sure. But definitely, uh, I would still say, even uh, to the guy who is making good choices and to the guy that's making bad choices, guy, girl, whoever... They're both still warred upon daily by Them, that struggle. By themselves, though. By that, yeah. by that internal struggle. Like, that, and, what, yeah. and what takes more energy? Honestly, what takes more energy? It, in my opinion, it takes more oh, energy probably, to be angry. 
to be the jerk. To be to the be, jerk. Well, but it is easier, you know. But it's it, not, it, it, man, it's because more, you have to maintain it's easier it. In, it. Because it's more natural. It feels more natural to just I don't know that it does because judge. I think everybody wants to <laughs> smile. Everybody wants to be loved. Sure. Everybody wants to love. And when you don't get those things, when you don't get love and you don't get joy and all that kind of stuff, it's you start to frown. You start to treat other people bad. And you have to maintain that. We don't, you don't have to maintain being happy if you're happy. I mean, now there are some mental things. I'm not, I'm not taking that away. There, there's some chemical things that go on, but I'm just saying in general, if all, well, the pro, if everything's firing properly, it takes more effort to be a dickhead than to be a good person. Yeah. And the problem is, uh, then again, you talk about energy and you're uh, spending uh, way more energy. <laughs> you're drained. Right. But the problem is, uh, uh, Way too many of us are more addicted to the draining energy than are, are addicted to the good energy, and we, we're seeing that all around the world. I mean, it is we've become more obsessed over the negative than we are of the positive. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, if you were to ask your average man, you know, they're gonna answer negative more so than positive. You know what I mean? I do think that. You think I mean, there's more. Uh, there's more pessimists than though, optimists. Well, I know. I'm saying that that there just isn't, on a whole, uh, uh, based off of just pat the pattern you can see in nature, we're way more destructive in our behavior than we are uplifting in our behavior on a natural just day. Sure. Right. That's the problem. Because there's more I energy think. there. There's more sure. energy and negativity, so we gravitate towards it. And maybe that's that's the, maybe we're feeding the uh, the bad guys. That's what I'm the, saying, the, man. We're the power. We're and 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 that's going back to our uh, uh, our initial top of the top uh, episode subject. That's here. right. We're, we're we're in a trap. We're in a trap, but it's a trap that's meant to be uh, to get us angry and to get us upset, so that we feed the power grid of the universe. It could very well be. Now, when we start talking about entities that are outside of what we can physically see, I mean, who the hell knows? Right. So, I mean, maybe. Maybe there maybe. are entities at play on that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I don't think, you know, when we talk about devil and stuff like that, I don't think it's anything like that. But maybe there are universes. Maybe there are beings that feed off that kind of thing. And maybe that, like I said, it takes more energy to be negative. There's more energy in negativity. So, if they can generate more negativity... They can generate more energy. It still goes back to what I was saying earlier. That was what I mean. There is, even if you're, if we're right, I, I think there is a God who we all think, feel and believe He's benevolent. He be, He created beautiful creation. Creation is usually, on average, pretty beautiful, mm -hmm, right? Sure. You look at your 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 standard creature on the earth, and you're like, oh, that's pretty, or it's cute, or whatever. Uh, I mean, there's some ugly ones too, but uh, but even still the beauty in their own way. Uh, but yeah, then that's where I go. But there also seems to be this, even if it's like you're saying, interdimensional beings using us for power grids. That's the, what I'm saying. It's the negative force that wars upon humanity. And that is the curse that we live in on this planet, on this prison planet there without a doubt seems to be something that goes after family and goes after good quality things that would seem obvious to us to do and less energy for us to do. But yet, for some dumb reason, we still fight and divorce our wives mm -hmm. and murder our neighbor and, you know, steal from the uh, the place down the street. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We do bad things. We just yeah. do stupid and bad things. And... I do think that it is a faction of something that wars upon humanity in that way to to get something in return. For sure. I mean, I think in this episode, we've answered all questions. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I I think, like you said, from the start of what we were talking about and, you know, um, and then ending where we are. I think there might be some truth to uh, to what they're talking about with the reincarnation trap. I uh, I think it might be kind of a little twisted in the theory, but it sounds like maybe there is a purpose to have negativity on Earth, right? Like maybe it's to feed, maybe it's to keep something going. You know, the mm -hmm. more that they can keep us angry and 
and against each other, uh, the more it powers something. I'm sure that even if we were it were revealed to us what it was, we'd still go, what? We'd still go, Trump's my guy. <laughs> Trump is my, he's even more my guy than ever before. <laughs> I'm going to wear his gold diapers now. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> People are wearing diapers now. Did you know that? Like the, there's some weird thing about diapers. I don't understand what's going on. I don't know, man. I, and here's the I'll thing the, is I think uh, that, that is a cult. Uh, well, yeah. Right and even there. if you know, you there's go, a, listen, if I started my own country or my own planet and I could just have the people that thought like me on that, at some point, somebody's not going to think like you and they're going to do no. some stupid shit. And then there's going to be a faction and then we're going to nope. end up back yep. where we That's are. Right. So there is no, I, I don't know, man. I just, I don't see. <laughs> I don't see humans with a reign of peace. I think spiritually, yes, 100%. Uh, but I think in this physical realm, I think this is part of the game. I think it's part yeah, of the game. Yeah, I do. I think it's par for the course. Unfortunately, it's the, the thing that's just been built into the system. It's cursed. It's cursed. It, it, is, it has moments of spectacular beauty and awesome oh, yeah. wonder, right? Yeah. And that's cool. Uh, that's why I don't think it's hell. Uh, no, it's definitely not. Hell. But, but uh, uh, it definitely is. There's something about it that, yeah, it's a test. It's there's something about it's it. It's been designed for a reason, and we'll find out one day. We'll find out, um, may, or maybe we won't. I don't know. But, um, yeah, it's all very interesting. And I, for one, am very glad that on my um, ex- my 80 years or whatever, however long I live. That I got to spend some of it with you too. Oh my gosh, that's so. And sweet. the rest of our listeners today. Yeah, I agree. Todd, I you, agree. Josh, Josh, you guys. I mean, this is great. I love you guys. Well, I think that's glad, a good place to I'm wrap glad it we're up. Here together. I am too. I'm glad we're here. You know, Josh. So any final white words? Like a trick. <laughs> <laughs> you want to show I us a know. trick? No, is the white know. light a trick or is it truth? Oh, I thought you I said. Do you guys want I, to see a trick? Um, is, you know what, Josh? I'll say this. I don't think it matters either way. If you've picked wrong and you're reincarnated, then uh, so what? Just do it again. Yeah. Maybe you'll learn better I'm the next time. I'm going to reincarnate as you, Tim. Oh, my gosh. That'd be yeah. awesome. Yeah. Have two mm-hmm. Tims. Um, yeah, wow. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's a trick. I think the white light is, is the afterlife. I mean, I, it doesn't, that doesn't <clears throat> mean that there is not a, an alternative, right? Like if, right, if there might be an alternative. If we're getting yeah. trapped in a grid... Sure. I think the white light is a thing for real, but I think there might be a perce- uh, like a perception of a white light, uh, like a fake white light. That might be the, the trap. I don't know how you know the difference. One's a little more tungsten, you know? Uh-huh. That's exactly what it is. You're right. This is kind of a, you know, this is, yeah. this is too no, white. What is this, a 5,000? 5,000? Yeah, don't you hate those? Like it's fluorescent or something. Yeah, like, nah, it's too much. Really All right, I'm out. No, I'll, I'll, no, I'll go to the next light. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I want the real brilliant, brilliant light. The one that like looks so brilliant. Yeah, the one that really makes everything white. Really shiny. Really That's shiny. Off one. <laughs> <laughs> guys, I love you. Sounds good. Glad we figured out some stuff. Well, we today. figured it all out. So uh, you so guys go welcome. out and have a great week. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely learned something. <laughs> Made it more confusing than ever. Uh, <laughs> all right. See you guys. All right. Love See y'all. Ya. Love y'all. Created by human